Yeah. yeah. Do I have enough money? Come on, man. Do I have enough designer stuff and Watch toys? It. Watch it. Watch it. Yeah. And, 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 and if I got enough stuff, then the people will, yeah, yeah, accept me and appreciate me. Yeah. While you busy keeping up with the no, Jones. No. Yeah. Now the problem with these four standards is that none of the four standards are stable. They are shaky, shaky. They have no stability to themselves. Because at some point in life, each one of them will change. You better believe it. You might be the hot thing today. But keep on living. That, that Coca-Cola bottle can turn into a milk jug. You better be careful. That good-looking smile all of a sudden you're missing a few teeth. I know what I'm talking about. Appearances can change. Headlines start going further and further back. Y'all ain't talking to me. Some folks are addicted to their achievements. Oh, I did this, I did that. I got this trophy and I got this plaque and I got this. That don't mean nothing. Because somebody going to yell at you, going to come up behind you and surpass all the records and achievements that you thought that you had set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Your approval rate can change in the blink of an eye. Folks can love you one minute and hate you the next. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your influence can change by one choice, one bad choice that you made. And all of a sudden, you ain't influencing no more. So you got to be careful not to uh, 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 get yourself locked in in this standard because it has no stability. The trouble with letting things like this dictate your self-worth. Yeah. Um, they will always change. And at one moment, you one way. And at the no another moment, you another way. And let the truth be told, you never know where you really stand. Good God of mine. Yeah. What do you do? Yeah, when you, when you don't understand your self-worth, you start falling for anything. Yeah, your self-worth yeah, when, when you're up, you're smiling. When you're down, you're, you're frowning. Yeah, but if you want to build your self-esteem, you better build it on something that will last. You better build it on something that won't change. Yeah, yeah, you better build it on something that's solid. Yeah, his name is Jesus. See, folks are fickle. But God ain't fickle. Folks are wishy-washy. But God ain't wishy-washy. Folks are, they, they, they flip it flop. They, you know, they flip flop back and forth. But God won't flip back on, on you. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's solid. Y'all know so Solid as a rock. Good God of mine. And when you understand the way God thinks of you, it changes your way of thinking of yourself. And as it starts changing your mind, it'll change your heart. And then all of a sudden you have a desire to be Christ-like. You don't have to get the approval rates. We're living in a time now that, yeah, yeah, addiction is, is, is sky high. And folks ain't, ain't, ain't smoking no crack. They ain't doing no weed. Don't know. They are addicted to the likes and the hearts and the roses on Facebook and Instagram. And if they don't get the likes, they feel like they've been rejected. From society, if they don't get the hearts, they say, "What's wrong with my picture?" But you better find someone who's gonna love you when you're up and love you when you're down. And his name is Jesus Christ. So we got a good example on today of this little man who met a big God. This, yeah, 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 a little man who met a big God. His name is Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus lived up in a city called Jericho. And one day, he had an encounter with Jesus. Good God Almighty. Zacchaeus got word 
that Jesus was coming in time. Jesus was only hoping to see Jesus. Yeah, the man that everyone was talking about. Good God Almighty, he didn't even know this. But he needed Jesus in the worst way. If there's ever a man found in your body and in the Bible that needed, yeah, 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 some self work picking up was Zacchaeus. If you base it off these four evaluations, yeah, he flunked in three of them. And the only one he had was money. His appearance, y'all, Zacchaeus. Now, this ain't me now, this is historians. So don't, don't be jumping on me now. <laughs> The historians tell us that he wasn't a beautiful man. He was a midget. A munchkin. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he had a child body with a grown man head. He was short and sad. I got, I'm going to tell you about historians now. Yeah, that's fine. No, it ain't Bible. It's, it's historians. Yeah. And, 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 and the only real achievement that he had is he knew how to overcharge the people for financial gain. He was rich, y'all, but he was broken. And for the reason, and for the for the record, money can't make you happy. Money come and money go. And there's some that even got money and they, they got it in a little savings and a nest egg and some 401 and thrift savings and all that and, and, and still don't have no peace. Joy can't come from money. Joy can't sustain it. Now we all need money, don't get me wrong. But your basis can't be on money. Yeah, yeah. Happiness can't bring, yeah, money can't bring you happiness. Yeah, yeah. I know many folks yeah, that was walking with the Lord Chasing after the Lord. But they put the Lord to the side and start chasing the dollar. Good God of mine. And I'm going to let you know. Get Jesus first. Get the money second. Yeah, yeah. Don't put money before before the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Because the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these other things shall be added unto you. I'm, I'm expecting the Lord to add it to my life. I'm expecting the Lord to add some stuff because I'm going to chase after him and then his blessings going to chase after me. Good God of and I need some of the Lord's blessings to chase after me. First of all, he was a tax collector. The Bible said he wasn't just a, no ordinary tax collector. It says he was the chief. <laughs> he was a head. He was a big dog. With, yeah, with a little body. your money, you better tell him $1,800. And he pockets $300 yeah, for each household. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> now, in or now, he was a Jewish man working for the Romans. Uh -huh. Now, in order to become a tax collector, well, you had to, yeah, you had to bribe them and work with them and do your own folk dirty. There's three things that came along with being a tax collector. Number one, your family would disown you. So he ain't had no family. He ain't get no love. You know, it wasn't like he was going on no dates, you know. <laughs> Number two, I'm still working it. Look, I better cut that out. Number two, <laughs> he wasn't allowed to come to church to become a tax collector. You sign your life away and say you ain't allowed because they would disown you. The church would disown you. Number three, they looked down on you. You were, you were looked upon so bad like you was a murderer. Because that's exactly what you would do. You was killing both houses. Because you was taking more than what they were bringing in. And, and all the extra was going in his pocket. He gave Rome theirs. And as a result, Zacchaeus looked good on the outside. But he was miserable on the inside. How do you know, bro Walker? I'm glad you asked. It's very simple. I know because you can't have a guilty conscience. 
and still feel good about yourself at the same time. It don't happen. They don't, they don't even mix. You can have a bad country and feel good about yourself. No, no, no. Yeah. Wait, what we have here is a guy with a lot of money. Yeah, but didn't even like his own self. But one day, yeah, he encountered a man by the name of Jesus that changed his life forever. Why? Because he learned how much he mattered in the eyes of God. And that's what we better start realizing. How much we matter in God's eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No matter what state you in, it would never change God's view of you. He loves you regardless. Stop worrying about how folks supposed to like you and love you. No, they, sometimes they folks that like you for what you're doing for them. When you stop doing for them, they don't like you no more. So when you get under God's umbrella and start looking at things the way God look at you, it changes your perspective. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you don't have to tell, yeah, yeah, you don't have to tell no lies. Sometimes folks come to you, yeah, uh, 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 I need to get, a, I need to get about one hundred fifty dollars from you. Okay, you can go with it. You might have it. I just don't have it to give. Y'all seen that? I ain't lie. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't lying saying I ain't got it. I just don't have it again. I got a Georgia Power Light bill coming up. I got more coming up. I got rent coming up. Be careful of allowing folks to use you for that personal gain. Y'all with me today? And if you're feeling a little empty today, you're in the right place. Because on this lesson today, it gives us hope. That no matter how bad or how jacked up your life may be, there's always hope when it comes to the Lord. This story illustrates three things. The number one, Jesus noticed him. You have to tell yourself, no matter how badly things may be looking, no matter how bad you may be feeling, yeah, yeah, no matter how, yeah, if you got the lights or don't get the lights, Long as you know that Jesus notices you, that's what matters. Zacchaeus, yeah, just wanted a glimpse, yeah, because he was too short. He couldn't see above the crowd. Zacchaeus did two things that rich folks don't do. One thing, uh, two things rich folks didn't do, in, you know, during that that culture. Number one, they didn't run in the crowd. Number two, they didn't climb no trees. Rich folks don't have to run. And rich folk they gotta climb. That's that's what that's what children do. Children run around. Children, you know, climb a tree. But he threw all that to the side. He had something on the inside of him. Yeah, that had him driving to get to Jesus. And don't you know that Jesus knew his attendant? Good God of mine. Yeah, 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 yeah. They were shocked. Yeah, that he would do something like that. Because Jesus stopped. In the middle of all this crowd, he had folks touching him left and right, shouting and, and screaming to get to him. And he walked in the city and he stopped and paused right at a little tree on the side of the road. Good God Almighty. And said, Yeah, come on down. Knew Zacchaeus by his name. Ain't you glad to know the Lord knows you by your name? Now here it is, all the big timers thinking they're going to call on them. And sometimes the very folks that you reject and, and count out is the very first, the very person that the Lord will lift up in your presence. Yeah, that's why the Bible says, he'll prepare a table in the very presence of your enemies. Come on now. Why did Jesus do this? It's because Jesus knew Zacchaeus hard. Just like uh, Jesus know our heart. Yeah, yeah. That's why the Bible says, man looks on the outside, but God looks at the heart. And yeah, yeah. The kids might have a few crooked ways, but let the truth be told, yeah, even now, or even back then, some of us have some crooked ways. You might not want to tell nobody. <laughs> so one day you might be up a tree. Today you might be on a limb. Today you might be dangling, barely holding on. Yeah, but I'm here to let you know, God got his eyes on you. 
Matter of fact, God never took his eyes off you. God sees every point in your every area of your life. He sees your pain. He sees and understands your thoughts. He knows everything you've done. And God always has his eyes upon you. Yeah, yeah, that's how much God loves you. We have a hard time imagining, yeah, God paying that much attention to us because we don't pay that much attention to him. Oh, y'all missed that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we may be looking toward, yeah, God uh, every once in a while, but God is looking at us every second. The deepest expression of love is to show attention. When you give someone's attention, you give them a piece of your love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Number two, Jesus lifts you up. All this man's life, he had been ridiculed and rejected. All his life, he had been talked about. Because Luke, which, which was a, a, a medical doctor, a physician, he knew all the medical terms. Yes, and so in, in the Greek, the word short literally means a child's body with a grown man head. That literally, that's literally what it means. So he had been picked on all his life. He had been rejected all his life. Mm -hmm. And it would be safe to assume that he was a target of ridicule. And so he grew up with this attitude, I don't care. Yep, they right. don't care about me, I don't care about them. Right. Give it how you live. Give, give, give me that tax money. Yep. And he was stacking that money because they had picked on him all his life. Yep. So he, he, adopted, he adopted a nonchalant attitude. attitude. Yeah. Yeah. See, the reason why folks sometimes act the way they act mm. is because someone picked on them. Someone beat them down with words. Someone did something, so they put up this 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 their defense mechanism. Don't mean it right, but that's what happened. But Jesus looked at the kids in front of this huge crowd and called them by name, and that shocked everybody because Jesus knew his name as one of the biggest scoundrels in town. But in spite of the kids' sin. Jesus still lifted them up while everybody else was putting them down. Ain't it glad to know that God will lift you up when everybody is putting you down? What's my point? Yeah, Jesus saw the best in him when everybody else didn't see nothing but the worst in him. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 says we are God's masterpiece. Yeah, we are his artwork. Yeah, yeah, and he displays us. Yeah, yeah, he puts us for everybody to see. I'm here to let you know, we, have, we are not mass productions. No, we're not. When you go to, they used to be a store called Fred's. I used to like Fred's. Boy, I go in there, boy they used to have some nice pictures. They was cheap. And the good, the big ones, they'd be at the top up there. And they'd have a thousand of them. $20. I said, boy, that's a good deal. And I get about four, five of them. But when it comes to you and I, we are not mass production. God took his time piece by piece. And that's why you are a masterpiece. Nobody can be the, be the person that you are. Nobody can do the things that you do. No one has the swag that you have. No one has the charisma, personality, and diligence like you. God made you that way. So you can be different. Good God of mine, you are valuable in the eyes of God. And number three, God, Jesus wants you. Good God, not only does Jesus notice you, not only does Jesus lift you up, but lastly, Jesus wants you. I think that's the hardest thing to understand for us. That no matter what we have done in the past, Jesus still wants a personal relationship with you. That's how much he loves you. So Jesus did something. He didn't just walk up, he didn't walk up to the tree and just notice, but he asked him to come on down. I've got to be a guest at your house. See, when we do the open, when we open up the doors, that's why I said he stands there and knock. 
And if any man shall let him in, he'll come in and shout with you. That means he has to sit down and eat. Because he's eating. It's a, that's intimacy. You don't never should be eating with nobody that you want, that y'all ain't y'all ain't uh, clicking together. Because that's a form of intimacy. Y'all are sharing each other, y'all are sharing a meal in front of each other, dialoguing, uh, uh, connecting. And so Jesus said, I need to be a guest at your house. That's how much I want you. I'm going to ask, can I be the guest at your house? In front of all these folks that have criticized you all your life. That have beat down your self-worth. I stop by to let you know you are important to me. The good God and mother. Yeah, as the kids came in the house, they sat down and had a good meal together. And in the midst of them just dialoguing, he said, if I have done anybody wrong, I'll give it back double. And if I cheated anybody, I'll give it back four times. And he says, sure, the salvation has come to this house today. Good God, am I ain't you glad that if you spend time with Jesus, he can change your heart. If you spend time with Jesus, he can change your mind. Spend time with Jesus. He'll change your walk. He'll change your talk. And I'm so glad. Just like the kids, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Jesus and not that choked up. And that's you to come on down. Good God of mine. And that's why many of you came on down and gave your life to Jesus. Because he calls you. Yeah. He calls your name. And all of a sudden, when you looked around with tears and snot running down your eyes, you find yourself sitting up there because your time had came. My time is up, and I thank you for yours. All over the building, let us stand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Can you tell the Lord thank you?
be right here at 11 o'clock hour. We're here a good time. No one has to break their neck to get over to the church. I pray that many of you will make your way over to Faith Bible and hang out with us. If not, you know, we do pray that the Lord will truly bless you anyhow. So after we got finished opening the doors of the church, I looked down. And my daughter Destiny, which she lives in Atlanta, you know, I don't know if y'all knew that, but she lives in Atlanta, so it, you know, sometimes it's a little hard to get down here. She said, she screenshot me some pictures while I'm preaching. And she said, good service. And, and what she got out of it, she said, don't chase money. Yeah, chase God, and then the blessings will chase you. I said, that's all right. Well, that bless my heart. That bless my heart. Our chairman, Deacon Abbott, in a good way, he eased over to another church service. As, um, they had class reunion this whole weekend, so he's been, he been busy. He called this morning, and he wanted to come. I said, man, let me set you free. Take your butt on over there and have a good time. and Y'all go get something to eat and chill on out. It's all, it's all good. So that's what brought chairman. He's over there having a good time as um, they celebrate a class reunion. Yeah, and speaking of class reunion, only yesterday, yeah, I went down to, uh, what's the name of that place? What's the, what's the, huh? Yeah, Brooke Haven. I went down to Brooke Haven yesterday. And, yeah, next to that. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, we chilled out. Uh, it was my 30th class reunion on yesterday. 30, yeah, I've been out of school 30 years. We went down there and had a good time and left there and hung out with my grandson. And, and here we are. We at church today. Um, I am asking, please reach out to friends and family members and all of our church members. We are expecting and hoping that everybody can make it back to church on next Sunday so we can have a good church Sunday. Um, I got some. I got, I, got, I got a thought in mind, but I can't tell. You just got to wait till next Sunday. And then we'll go from there. Let us stand all over the building. Let's get on out of here. Let the church say amen. amen. 